I just want to say hello to everybody and welcome all our parents and those and the kids too, perhaps, if they're watching. Um, as we introduce a, a very wonderful person who has come onto our staff, um, a colleague, Benjamin Uden, who comes to us kind of in such a, a blessed way when we were in search for a vision and our and then the phone rang so i'd like to ask benjamin Yudin just to say hello some of you know him from kabbalah some of you adults are studying with him but just to ask you a little bit about yourself benjamin um you haven't always been in northern california tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are <clears throat> Uh, greetings, everyone. I look forward to meeting you in person. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and raised in an Orthodox Jewish home. And I went to Orthodox Yeshiva until I was 16 years old. At that point, my rebellious period against Orthodox Judaism began. And I, was, uh, take, I took leave of Yeshiva and finished up high school in a public school. Uh, following that, I did two years in the Marines, and after that, I went to university in New Jersey, undergraduate school at Montclair State, where I majored in philosophy and religion, and then I did graduate school work at Drew University, where I focused on the ancient Near East, the history, the history of Egypt, Mesopotamia, until three, from 3000 BC to 70 AD. And I also studied the sacred texts from each of those uh, uh, areas. Following um, my interest in the ancient Near East and the Bible, I went into studying Kabbalah and mysticism. And for the last few decades, that has been my search and my hobby as well. And I've been teaching for the last 20 years in this area. That's fascinating. And I know a little bit about um, how you teach Kabbalah, that it is a way of life and a way of love. Can you tell me a little bit about how that may have directed you to the kind of Jewish education you uh, feel drawn to? Yes, this is an excellent question. I feel that the foundation of Jewish education is the heart. And if we nourish the heart, we will be able to nourish the easier part, and that is the brain. But when you have a child wanting to be in the classroom because of the emotional atmosphere that's being generated in the classroom, and because of the way they are being respected and taught, the job of education becomes absolutely seamless. And the children can't wait to learn because they know how much you are enjoying teaching them. Also, we are able to work at the pace of each child. At uh, Beth Shalom, because we have such small classes, we are able to go at a pace that will accommodate both the fastest and slowest child within the classroom. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, uh, the, because you are a teacher, an educator, love children, and a Kabbalist, you probably have a favorite Hebrew letter. Do you have a favorite Hebrew letter? It probably would be the second letter in the Hebrew alphabet, the Bet. Mm -hmm. Because Bet means house. And in Kabbalah, what is taught how to create a house within one where the spirit of God may dwell. So it would be bet. Mm -hmm. With the dagesh or without the dagesh? Uh, with, with the dagesh. Okay. And for those of us who don't know what a dagesh is, it's the dot that's inside the letter that changes it from a vet to a bet. Yes. Um, so, Rabbi, if I may interrupt, thank you for that wonderful introduction of Benjamin. Welcome, Benjamin, to the team. We're thrilled to have you. And uh, thank you to all of, to, to all of you for 
um, sort of doing this in a different way um, through Zoom. We had different plans and, and you know, a little change of course, and, and here we are all together. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing that we have this platform to, to be with each other. Um, I, I have a question for the two of you, if that's okay. So my question to the two of you is, um, what is your vision um, for this new education program that we're launching uh, in the fall? Um, if you can give us sort of the spirit of it and um, the vision, we would love to hear your thoughts on that. Recently, I've been looking at the Purim Spiel video that we did. And I'm so grateful that we had the opportunity of celebrating Purim before we were quarantined. And I look at the joy of the children as well as the adults who are participating and how much fun we had. Yes, and um, there is something about that spirit that is very Beth Shalom. And when I think about the vision of our, of our religious school, I feel that joy. I, you know, even during this time, when we've been uh, filming our services, sometimes we have children telling stories and then we splice them into the video. There is a joy and our, and our kids, I think when they know, how, when they see how much we appreciate them, they just wanna, you know, shine and, and be part of it. I, I envision our school being a, a Beth Shalom school where the children know how much they are loved and how much we depend on them just as they depend upon us. Wonderful. Thank you, Rabbi. Benjamin? I'd like to amplify a little bit more on what Rabbi said in terms of being enjoyable. I feel that religious education is unique and that we in religious education are not intent on emulating the way public school education is taught. This for me means that there will be no examinations in the class, there will be no homework, there will be no report cards. Parents will be invited in to sit in for 10 or 15 minutes as they wish to see how their, at their child's classroom is being conducted. I would like to have an open door policy also for my office. If there is a question after school or before school from a parent or a child, I would be happy to work with him, on, him or her in that area. Uh, as equally as important as enjoyment is the desire for the child to want to come to school. And in terms of creating that kind of an environment, I used to have a sign on my desk when I was a principal in New Jersey. The Ruach starts here. And the Ruach is the spirit. The spirit of the school starts with me. And as you can tell, I've been smiling throughout this entire interview because I am delighted to be working in this environment. Benjamin, tikkun, tikkun olam, doing things to fix the world is such an important part not only of reform Judaism, but of the moral character that we want to develop in our children. And I would love to talk with you about how you see social action projects being integral to our religious school. You know, in, in the ethics of our fathers in Pirkei Avot, it says on three things the world stands, on the teachings in the Torah, on service, and on doing good deeds. The doing of good deeds is part of the foundation of education in Judaism. And so I see us visiting nursing homes or um, hospitals even, uh, performing songs, giving out candy on Purim, uh, bringing them latkes, but social uh, service is a necessity in, in personal growth and in fixing the broken pieces, as you say. 
Ra oh, Rabbi, would you like to add anything else to, to that wonderful answer about Tikkun Olam? I just like the idea that each class would, would really have that be a focus and that um, parents would be able to be engaged in that with the kids. It's a, it's a very important part of what we do at Congregation Beit Shalom as a, as a, as a community. So uh, to see that translate into the, into the education of the children is, is really wonderful. What kind of child do you think this education program will sort of help blossom and, and nurture? A child is entitled to be nurtured and taught and in a way that will promote the growth of Judaism in their heart, the learning of Hebrew in their mind. And so it's not so much as what type of child would be attracted to this, is what child wouldn't be attracted to this form of education. And the fact that our, our classes are small at this point, um, I feel that our, our teachers will be able to assess their students. You know, they'll, be, they'll know them and they will be able to uh, help them and know where they're at in the classroom. And I think that that personal connection will make a big difference in how they learn and how much they love to be there. The joy of being involved in a program that is almost allows individual attention uh, throughout the class uh, allows for tremendous potential and possibilities. And I feel that from the very first class on, the children will be going home inspired and sharing with their parents how much they are enjoying coming to school at Beit Shalom. Um, in, in a few sentences, what do you think makes this new program really, truly unique and different? Well, I can't really compare what anyone else is doing, but I can say that over the years, there have been some Congregation Beit Shalom um, traditions that have developed. For example, our children participate in Friday night services. They once a month they lead the service you know i love it and also our post b'nai mitzvah children chant torah for the high holy days and we have a young lady named ella verano who will be sounding the shofar for for rosh hashanah we have you know? these things that we do that we have a little art gallery that we hope to develop even further where our children will feel like their art matters enough for us to put it in our, our art gallery. I just feel that these little things that we do that are part of our culture will continue to do. I also love um, a little program that we started years ago called Pajama Havdala. Benjamin, I'm sure you have nice pajamas, but, and I, but anyway, <laughs> what it means is that our children come with their families on a Saturday evening, we have a program. We have um, we have milk and cookies, and we make havdalah together. And it's a lovely way to bring us all in to live Jewish in in simplicity and in joy. So those are some of the things that I know will continue to be part of our unique program. The fact that our kids can lead services, the fact that they learn how to chant Torah by learning the tropes from me that they can participate in the High Holy Days and that we do um, programs on a Saturday evening. I would like to say one more thing. And again, it's just in support of what the rabbi said. And this is to the parents. When you bring your child to services on a Friday night or have dollar service, that memory of going to temple with their parents remains with them throughout their life. And they, in turn, when they have their children, they will remember what a positive experience it was going to services with their family. Thank you. Thank you. When kids can't make it to, um, let's say, a regular Wednesday afternoon, 
would they be able to maybe come in on a Tuesday for 40 minutes to study with you? Yes. Or if they can't come in, if they're too far away, um, they are more than welcome to have a Zoom session with me. Okay. And we would learn from there. Each child will have their own textbook with them. So there's no problem in terms of uh, any denying force in that area. Thank you. And that, that's helpful. I, I would like to add that, um, you know, as a, as a parent of four children who are still in school and have, you know, each of them has different activities, this, this is a really a critical piece that always um, puts the whole family and serving a, in, a, in a conundrum of whose who's after school activities do we accommodate, you know, and how, and how do we do it in a way that uh, meets all the kids' desires. So in addition to uh, having this online op sort of or Zoom-based alternative, I think what I really um, like about Benjamin's ideas is that uh, in terms of Hebrew teaching is that he's thinking really about working in small groups with kids um, so that they get more of a one-on-one -on -one mentoring, uh, tutoring, you know, sort of environment. And that's very different from having your child sitting in a classroom with even if it's 10, 12 kids who have a variety of needs and one teacher trying to accommodate all of them. So I think that that's pretty unique and, um, and I think a wonderful thing. Kids, you know, will get their, their Hebrew learning needs met on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Right, so, more tailored, more tailored for them. Absolutely. And also, as much as we're trying to accommodate the child, we're also trying to relieve uh, stress for the parents in terms of who's going to take the kid to, who's going to pick them up. We can do it online and we can do it as your schedule is available. We are thinking really about the family in a practical way that they, so that the family's involved in the, in in the education of their children. Um, so that means that there will be a lot of opportunities um, for parents and other family members to, to be involved in activities around the children's learning. Benjamin, you, you are thinking a lot about how we can make this program really family-centered rather than just child-centered. Every now and then have a Friday night service where the children go up on the beamer with their parents mm -hmm. and the younger kids who don't know Hebrew that well, they and their parents would read an English portion together mm -hmm. from, the, from, the, uh, sir, from the Friday night service. And when a kid goes up there with their family and they participate together, it means that they're practicing the prayer at home, mm -hmm. they're practicing um, how to say it, and uh, it creates a memory that is very warm. And that, and that will keep people or the children, as they grow, keep wanting to come back to the temple. I love that. You know, I want to say that this very unusual season that we find ourselves in, quarantined and many families are spending more time together than they ever have before but there is an intimacy that i imagine is there that if we can carry the best of that forward there have been some blessings in this of uh, of watching and know, being together if we can bring some of that forward um when we're no longer forced to be quarantined but when we are eager to be together that will be that will be wonderful. So, I think that one of you brought up the um, sort of the topic of Hebrew learning. I think maybe Rabbi did, and I was thinking maybe we want to talk in a little bit about that. 
that and how, you know, especially Benjamin, how you think you're going to um, sort of bring that to the program? Um, what are, what's your, your sort of philosophy on that and your vision for, for Hebrew learning? Well, first of all, I think I have to start by saying that I'm delighted that I will be actually in the classroom and not just in my office during religious school time. And the most important educator, as far as I'm concerned, is the youngest grade teachers, because that foundation in Hebrew language that they receive in that first year is what they will build on for the rest of the time until they get to be with the rabbi to learn their bar mitzvah portion. So each child will have their own text, their own writing book, and each child, when I talk with them, either in the classroom or on Zoom, will be able to work directly from what is in front of them. And it will go, again, at a pace that everyone is comfortable with because there is no deadline and no schedule. The aim is to teach as gently and as nourishingly as possible. And that is what will be able to occur in the smaller classrooms at Beth um, Do you both have any other thoughts about that you would like to share with our audience on the other side, with our families and, and parents and many children? I would like to just add that this um, time of quarantine that we're that we're experiencing right now. Every adult has their issues, but every child is, is managing something that is unbelievable. And I think that the strength of our children is really um, being, being, um, being chiseled, you know, they are, they are showing up and they are managing something that I would have never expected. They are staying in, they're not going to their friends. They're, they're learning to innovate with their own time. They're learning to give more attention to hobbies. I think that we're seeing a, that our children have so much that we didn't even know was, that is just now being tapped. And I, look forward to working with the children uh, since we've all gone through this experience together. Wonderful, thank you, Rabbi. Benjamin? Well, I feel that this period of time in isolation will make the children that much more welcome to going back into the classroom. And from what I understand, the school year has been canceled uh, in terms in, uh, until September or August when you open. So the children will definitely look forward to being in that environment once again, where they are not confined. And the classroom uh, educational process is, is expanding, not confining the child. So I, I feel that this period of time uh, will create a level of gratitude that is beyond anything we've seen before. Thank you. Thank you for uh, all those inspiring words. Well, all I, I would like to say in closing is that when um, we'll be ready for all of our kids and uh, to have fun to come to this education program to enjoy being together and learning about their Jewish roots and, and identity and, and history. And we are, we couldn't be any more fortunate to have both of you really as, as the spiritual leaders and the hands-on leaders in many ways of, of this, this program. So thank you both. Thank you, it is our thank pleasure. You. Same here, an absolute pleasure working with the two of you is just an unbelievable dream come true. So bring on the kids. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's right. Thank you, everyone.